Since there are so many materials to be edited, I'm just going to show you the basics on some blank materials. There are two materials in V-Ray that we typically work with. One is the V-Ray light material, and one is the V-Ray material. I'm going to show you both really quick. So let's go into the V-Ray light material. In this map, we dictate the color of um, the light that we're dealing with, and we can turn on emit light on backside if we want it to be double-sided. V-Ray light materials are textures that emit a light in and of themselves. We can put a texture on that so that they emit um, a texture, and we can also put an opacity map on that. Say if we wanted to make this fence glow, we would put a chain link fence texture on there and the opacity map, and then it would emit light according to the colors that were assigned in the diffuse map. Let's move to the next material ID. I'm going to hit go forward to sibling and that's going to be represented right here in this number. The diffuse slot, like any normal material, is going to be what um, is showing up on the texture map. So I'm going to throw a pavement in there. Now if I wanted to have the pavement a darker color and I didn't want to edit it in Photoshop, I could go in and set our background color to whatever I wanted and go into maps and lower this number to say 8%, 80%, anything I wanted really. That's going to be represented by this material here which is going to be giving us a preview of what our material looks like. And as you can see, the lower the number, the lower uh, percentage this map is being applied and therefore it is mixing it with that base color. Let's just set it back at 100. If you select background, then you're going to get this, which doesn't make a difference right now, but if we want to add some reflection in here, it's going to make quite a bit of difference, as you can see. Let's put a low reflection on this guy, maybe 10. Oh, let's do 13. And if we want to turn off the reflection and refraction, that's going to be under options. So as you can see, that eliminates that whole thing. I'm going to leave it on just for the sake of showing you guys, though. So this is a pretty sharp reflection. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more so you can see what I'm talking about. If we want to change the specular highlight, we go in and make this number a bit lower. As you can see though, it also blurs out the reflection. So that's because these two are locked together. Let's unlock them, put the reflection at a 0.6, and you can see it's still just as sharp. If we want to blur it just a little bit, put it to 0 0.95, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. These numbers down here are going to really diffuse out the reflection so you can hardly see it all. I'm going to set mine to 0.8. That gives a little bit, but not too much. And I'm also going to mess with my highlight a little bit. Let's go to 0.6 and bring your reflection down quite a bit. Refract indicates how much um, it, the object is see-through, as if it were looking through a glass. So let's bring that up just to show you guys. Now, as you can see, it's as if you're looking through a glass of water. The glossiness is going to affect how much you're actually seeing through it. So if it were a murky glass, you would have it quite a bit more blurred. Now that it's finished with its calculations, you can see that you can barely see through the glass. And that's as a result of this glossiness right here. Let's bring our glossiness back up to 1. We can affect what sort of um, material we're looking at in here. We have Fong, Blin, and Ward, which are the same as our normal standard materials. I'm going to go with a Blin. 
and then we can put in maps at our discretion in all of these. Um, when I'm doing cloth, I like to put a noise map and reflected glossiness. Let's just take off the reflections and to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And let's also bring down our reflection a bit. So I'm going to go in here into reflected glossiness and choose a noise map. Bring that down to 0.1. Actually, let's show it. Oh, we can't. And then I'm going to bring that down a bit. It's not showing up in the viewport, but what that is going to do is it's going to apply a, um, a speckled effect or a stucco to this area right inside here where this gradient is showing up, although it's going to leave the hot spot alone. Um, that is very good for simulating cloth. If we threw that noise map in the highlight glossiness, we would see it showing up right inside these highlight points. And if we threw it into the reflection map, then that would indicate where the hot spots were and where the low spots were according to that map. And as you can see, we're getting a much higher reflection because certain points in the map are generating uh, a 1 in the reflection category. Those same theories can be applied to the refract map. I'm just going to swap it down into reflected glossiness for now. Um, so if you're interested in seeing what all these do, it's a really good idea just to apply it to a material in your scene with some lighting and drop a map of your choice in and see what it does. Um, generally those are the ones that I use the most. I also use bump maps quite a bit, which obviously are going to raise the amount of, um, put an added texture on here. You can sort of see it right now. There's a little bit of a roughness to it. That is going to generate a false um, map on top of your diffuse in which white represents how close to the camera the bumps are and black represents how far away um, along the normals of the map. So if we put that up to 100, you can see that gets significantly rougher. Um, displacement map is the same except using a normal map instead of a bump map which is based in a uh, color value map as opposed to black and white and is quite a bit more extreme and opacity map is going to generate uh, how much you're going to be able to see through your object if you want to have an object that does not reflect the glass in a way that makes it um, that where you can see through it, such as the space between the chain link fence as opposed to a glass of water, then opacity is a really good way to go. Environment would be what the reflection is actually reflecting. So if you had a very specific idea of what it was supposed to look like, then you would put a map in there. The thing to remember when you're working in a scene is that almost every uh, object has some sort of reflection, even though it's fairly low. If you're working on a budget constraint, then you don't necessarily need to be representing that. But if you're trying to get a very polished uh, looking image just for the sake of renders, you might want to think about putting a little bit of a reflection even in the concrete. 